All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Psycho's Platters, always powered by coffee each and every time. So, maybe you're asking yourself, and maybe not, what's the mighty Psycho going to go off and do today? Well, it's about that time, a slight pre-Thanksgiving treat here, for you get an episode, a nice heaping, full of stuffing episode of Jukebox from Hell. <laughs> uh, on the scorecards this time around, we're looking at episode 25, okay, episode 25. But before we get into that, once again, I would like to let you know that I have some of the best audience, in, in, literally, here in YouTube land. When I did my last episode here, episode 24, of the 1975 Deep Purple album, Come Taste the Band, about 250 views, like 250 views in like three days. I was just like, wow, you know, I hit a nerve. And I like that. I like when people interact. This is what this is all about. So please check that Deep Purple Come Taste the Band video if you have not seen it yet. But today we are going to talk about from August 1974. I have my I have my research here. Research today provided by um, Harry Nielsen's official site. Also, there was a forum that I can't remember the name right now, but uh, his first wife was involved. They kind of moderate questions and things. And then, of course, all music and wiki, okay? So we are looking at, from August of 1974, Pussycats. Now, originally, <laughs> oh boy, so as you can see, it's Harry Nielsen Pussycats, produced by John Lennon. Yes, those two were thick as thieves during the Lennon Lost Weekend phase from, uh, you know, 73 and 74, mostly. Um, but this album originally was, they wanted to try and call it Strange Pussies. RCA's like, uh-uh, <laughs> you ain't getting that. Um, then the other thing here, uh, which I thought I would show, because some people can't catch this, but... You see, under the table, there's a, there's a letter D block and there's a letter S block. And there's a rug in between the blocks, which was a hidden slide, basically, you know, drugs under the table. See what, see what they did there? Oh, boy. But that's a, that's a little reference to that, too, in case you guys didn't know that one. So this was the 10th album from him, all right? Uh, Pussycats went... Uh, to number 60 on the Billboard chart. His previous album before that was the was basically the Son of Dracula uh, soundtrack from that movie uh, that Apple Films made. Uh, in Australia, the Pussycats made it to number 45, so those Aussie fans liked it a little more. Uh, three singles were released here in the U.S. You had uh, Many Rivers to Cross, Subterranean Homesick Blues, and Don't Forget Me. Uh, unfortunately, if I remember correctly, none of them charted, which is sad. <clears throat> at least here in the United States. So, who's our players of the day on this one? You got Harry Nielsen on vocals and, and piano and others. Jesse Ed Davis, an excellent guitar player. He's on here too, along with Danny Korchmar, uh, also on guitar. Sneaky Pete Klein on pedal steel. Ken Asher on piano. Jim Keltner on drums. You get Ringo and, Ringo and Keith Moon on drums. Ringo does six tracks drumming and maracas and Keith Moon drums on two tracks. You also get Bobby Keys, Jim Horn on sax, and others. Now, uh, in mid-1999, they did release a 25th anniversary edition on CD, which uh, included uh, four bonus tracks um, in the Japanese edition. So on a record collecting standpoint, before we go into the song analysis, so here's your front, all right, and here's your back, and then this is a gatefold. Uh, unfortunately, this one here's got a cutout hole, but basically it's your lyric sleeves, your lyric, you know, in, in gatefold here, and then who performed on what, okay, which is kind of cool. So because you're going to be looking for this, and... It's on RCA. It's orange RCA, and yes, still Dynaflex. Um, some people liked it, some people don't. I'm talking about the Dynaflex. I might be talking about the album, too. But Dynaflex has had its critics. Uh, but you know, I'm going to tell you something. This thing plays wonderful. This is like a minty copy of this. So, really happy to have this in the collection. So, 
let's go in to our to our little bit here. So we start off with track one, which is Many Rivers to Cross. Now, it's a cover of a Jimmy Cliff song. Right away, not used to the horse voice he had. Now, part of it, I'm told, has to do with that him and John Lennon, I don't know if it was a dare or a challenge or whatever, but Harry went and did some primal screaming, which really kind of screwed up his voice. And you can hear that on several of these tracks. He, he wouldn't exactly get back to his normal voice ever, but by 1977's um, Nielsen album, that's the White Album, and it's K before the Nielsen, he starts sounding back to his normal self again. That's kind of nice. So anyways, but with many rivers, it, they also have here beautiful slide guitar and strings on this. You can hear the anguish in his voice. Track two, Subterranean Homesick Blues. Now this, of course, is a cover of the Bob Dylan classic. Starts out a cooker. I'm digging this better than Dylan's version. It's nice and frantic. And I mean it, because I'm like, I, I like this. I can dig this. Track three, Don't Forget Me. So beautiful and poignant. All right. I don't know if it's the lush strings or the pain I hear in Harry's voice, but this did hit me home personally, okay? It hit home for me on that one. Track four, All My Life. Yes, this definitely sounds like Harry sings personal on this. It's an okay song. Track five, Old Forgotten Soldier. Piano driven with acoustic guitar, singing like a man that went off to war in the day and reminiscing. And he's left without a cause because they took away his war. Track six, Save the Last Dance for Me. Now, this is the Doc Thomas written classic that, uh, you know, that he wrote. I love the Drifters version of this, okay? But I love this slower version of the song, and uh, it, it's really done nicely, to be yeah. honest with you. Track seven, <clears throat> Mucho Mungo slash Mount Elga. It's a really nice, quiet, dreamlike song, and uh, and Mount Elga uh, makes it sound like a song from the islands. Yeah, it does. It's kind of relaxing. Track eight, Loop de Loop. It's a cover of a 1963 hit from Johnny Thunder and the Bobettes. And uh, you know what? Uh, pass. I I'm going to tell you that right now. And it was the B-side to Mucho Mango when they released it in the U.S. And it should have just stayed there as a B-side and not on this album. Uh, track 9, Black Sails. A very sad, string-laden piece about basically the treasure is the love for all, from a woman. And then we close it out here, track 10, we end with a cover of Rock Around the Clock. And uh, on this one, you've got three drum kits going. you got, you got Ringo, Keith Moon, Jim Keltner, all on this track, all right? So three drum sets. While it is a kicker, it's just too busy and all over the place. And you know what? I'm sorry. You can't beat Bill Haley's version. And there's been so many versions of Rock Around the Clock. Uh, that have come out over the years, the most recent being Ringo, you know, putting it on one of his EPs. So, uh, <clears throat> so afterwards, before we really get that though, uh, by the way, there was a quad version of this on LP and 8 track. I'd love to hear it, to tell you the honest truth. Um, and they made special mixes for that, for that quad release. Also of note, during this time, March 28, 1974, in the studios, while Harry and John are working, Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder drop by. Now, somebody left tape running for that day, okay, and it was recorded and released later as a bootleg as a toot and a snore in 74. It's the only time since the Beatle breakup that John and Paul recorded together. I, I wish I could tell you there was audio gold in that. There really isn't, but it's still a nice historical uh, historical piece, okay? You can hear that on YouTube, too. It's out, Toot and a Snore in 74. Now, the afterwards. After a short break, Harry started recording his next album, Do It on Monday, 
which were released March 1975, but it didn't chart. A song recorded for Pussycat, Flying Saucer Song, with Joe Conker doing background vocals, was released on the Sandman album in 1976. Um, personally, I listen, I would have marginally rather have that than Loop De Loop on, on Pussycat. I'm not, you know, this song is kind of goofy, okay, and all over the place, but I think it, I think it would have fit more into the particular album here, the feel of it. Um, and John Lennon, well, he was still on his last weekend phase, in, you know, in summer of 74, but he recorded Walls and Bridges and gets a number one hit with Elton John, Whatever Gets You Through the Night. That's another story for another day. Now, um, the one thing, though, and you can tell through the whole, if you listen to the album as a whole, you can feel Lennon's you can, you can feel that Lennon's presence and his influence is in this album. Uh, you know, if you didn't even know that Lennon produced it and you just listened to it outright, you'd be sitting there going, well, wait a minute, there's a little, there's a little a Lennon element here, Lennon element here. Uh, and uh, I really kind of wish as a whole that this would have charted higher than number 60. Um, I'd say it could have maybe went into the lower rungs of the top 40, okay? I, I'm going to be a little generous on that. Uh, but I like, I am a Harry Nielsen fan. I have been a Harry Nielsen fan for quite some time. Uh, he is very underrated in all of that. So let me ask you a question. In 74, did you get this brand new? Uh, if you didn't, you know, if you didn't get a brand new, did you end up, you have this album. What's your favorite track off of here? Do you, are you a Nielsen fan? What's your favorite song or album uh, from Harry? Um, of course, he died way too, way too early, January in '94. Um, but, uh, but yeah, seriously. Uh, so, other, you know, you guys, like I said, have been giving me great responses to Jukebox from Hell. I've got uh, request suggestions written down already. Um, if you have any requests for new, you know, upcoming episodes for Jukebox from Hell, leave them in the comments. Uh, you know what, I look them over, and, uh, and, and like I said, if I get to do them, I will acknowledge you in that particular video. I still apologize about um, a couple weeks back um, not getting the person that I was supposed to for the requests, but I get a lot of requests for things. So, um, so put it in the comments, please, okay? So. Now, you may be asking yourself, and even if you didn't, you're still going to find out anyway, what is going to be the next Jukebox from Hell, episode 26? We are going to go forward a little over 13 years to go to a second solo album from a gentleman who was very popular in the, in the in the early to the early 70s to the early 80s, all right? Breaks Away, Goes Solo, his first album in 84, does very, very well. But in 1987, he puts out a sort of different kind of album. I couldn't believe I found this. This has been on one of my little lists. So next episode, we are going to be looking at Hi Hi from Roger Hodgson. That's right. Hi Hi. And uh, you know what? We're all going to go on a little musical journey on that. So once again, everybody, you know what? Thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for liking these things. And uh, you know what, guys? Have a great holiday season. Thanksgiving's coming up tomorrow. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, rock on. God bless. Always powered by coffee each and every time. That is the psycho promise. You take care. And thank you.